Welcome to Camera Ready and Able, the podcast that explores the intersection of media change and personal growth. I'm your host, Barbara Barna Abel, and my calling is to help you tap into your superpowers to thrive on camera and in life, and to make an impact on the world. This episode is brought to you by the phrase, how to find your drive, which is defined by my guest as gumption, enterprise, and moxie, which leads to a cocktail shaker full of even more great words like courage, spirit, and passion. So I am delighted that here to discuss is Raquel Bruno, who is the founder, president, and CEO of Drive Entertainment Group. Raquel is a TV, film, and digital producer, talent booking maven specialist, savant, media and creator coach, and popular DJ on Twitch. Welcome to the podcast, Raquel. It is so nice to see you, Barbara, especially after all these years of knowing you. I am honored to be here. Oh, thank you. And so for uh, everyone listening, it's... It's super fun that our paths cross as so many did back at um, MTV MTV networks back in the glory days. So to actually start out, like explain to us, like how do you actually get into the industry and where do you start? I think, well, now it's a little bit different than when of course I started, but I think it's really understanding uh, some of your favorite places and brands that you pay attention to. I think anyone that's getting into it right now, it's like, what speaks to you when you wake up in the day? Like, what is your passion that moment? Are you really listening more to music? Are you listening to some podcasts? Are there favorite news outlets you like to watch? Is there, you know, is there a network that you really, a streamer? I think for anyone that's graduating these days, and I like to work a lot with young, um, young folks that are coming into the industry. I really love figuring out where they're at because it is exciting and there's so many more opportunities, even though the news will tell you otherwise right now. I think there are a lot of great opportunities and a lot of different types of jobs. When I was starting out, I remember I joke about this all the time in high school. I remember that my guidance counselor handed me a piece of paper and said, what on this piece of paper do you want to do? And I'm like, it's not listed. I'm not sure what it is, but it's definitely not this. And so, um, you know, I, it, it took literally took a journey to kind of figure out and go through the flow of what is it that I wanted to do? And it wasn't until I really landed after being at Nickelodeon, I landed at MTV radio and I said, aha, talent booker, this is what it is. This is, this feels right. And I've been one ever since. And that was, I did that. I started that job in 2000. Can you just explain for anyone who doesn't know what a talent booker actually does? Because sometimes it's not entirely accurately portrayed, you know, it, when it you see it in a TV show. And um, I really applaud you because I, t- I have been in the talent booking trenches for many years and many, many award shows and specials kind of gives me hives now. So I'm so impressed that you're like really great at it. Thank you. It it is an up and down industry. I'm I'm not gonna uh, you know lie about that. It's it, you know we go through. That's why almost one of the reasons why I've started a new section of my business because it isn't as stable as one would like. I mean, anything in the freelance world isn't exactly always stable, but you have to, you honestly, that's what the moxie, you have to literally jump in every day and say carpe diem and like live your dream because it's not going to, it's just not going to show up for you unless you're going after it. So talent booking essentially is different from casting. Casting is wonderful. And I love casting. I'm not a casting person, but I'm a talent producer and booker. But basically if you watch any, um, nonfiction, anything that is a, a an award show, a red carpet, a digital series, anything that involves talent showing up for promotional purposes or showing up on a stage for the Oscars or the Grammys. There's someone like myself on the other side or a few of us on the other side putting that together from pitching the right award that they're going to be presenting to the time that they're showing up on a red carpet who they want to actually be a co-presenter with, who wants to be a host on the music side. It's booking performances, figuring out, are they going to do a medley of songs or what are they going to wear? You know, what's the kind of, uh, you know, what's the budget for all of that? So it really is when you see talent showing up for an award show, a documentary, a digital aspect of something, a red carpet, there's someone like myself who is actually working very closely with publicists, sometimes managers to get them, get them to the Greek is the best way I can say it. <laughs> Just like that movie. It's not easy to get them there. No, no it's not. There are a lot they of hurdles. Know. I say they're not even booked until they're literally in the seat. The mic is on. They've shown up on stage. They are literally not booked until that moment happens. So you are literally biting your nails until that moment happens. 
So I want to go back and ask you, what prompted you to choose the word drive for the name of your company? And then why did you want to you know, build this episode around talking about how to find your drive? So I think it's important. Drive really is what's your motivating factor. Drive is what's your North Star. When you wake up every morning, what motivates you to get to do what you do? And when I was leaving MTV and I wanted to start my own company, I actually started doing management. I wanted to go into producing. I actually do talent producing as well as EPing and what have you on shows. I'm in the Producers Guild, very proud of that. And so I was thinking about, well, what is a big part of my personality? And I literally went to the Saurus.com and started thinking about all the things that I am and drive literally was like a thunderbolt, which is why thunderbolt is in my, it's also not only just the Bowie aspect of it, but thunderbolt in it is like, I always throw energy at something and to, to make it happen. That's really an essence of what I do, whether it's in talent booking, producing strategy, helping people out. So drive is what is your motivating factor? What drives you every day? And you have to really tap into that because there's a lot of people that are sleepwalking through life. And it's very sad to me. I mean, I was really lucky to have parents who are musicians who said, listen, you can do anything you want. They were teacher, they are teachers and parent and uh, musicians. They are both, or they were both. And and they say to me to this day, do anything you want to do, but do it the best of your ability. And so I never had parents that said, hey, fall back on a practical job or, you know, I don't know. This is kind of like a, a phase. I don't know if this is something that's going to last. It was like, OK, you can do whatever you want to do and we'll support you, but do it to your best of your ability. And that's a big part of my drive as well. My mom's a singer. My dad's a songwriter. They also were teachers and they did real estate and they did anything they could to support their passion. So drive is really your passion. What is it every day that you wake up that you want to do? And because that's what's going to get you through the tough stuff, the murky stuff, being in the trenches, working with some tough people, working with people you may not want to see every day, but also realizing that you're building something out of nothing and you need drive to do that. I also love the word because it's in your uh, bio, I think, is enterprise. Because when I looked up the definition, that's like, um, you know, taking on an endeavor despite the risks, despite knowing that you're out of your comfort zone. And you just described that beautifully. But so I want to throw that out there because I'd never looked up the definition of that before. And I was like, this is fantastic. So moving from that a little bit, I want to ask you, have you ever lost your drive or misplaced it? You know, interestingly, mm -hmm. the last couple of months have been a really tough one for you. I'm also very honest about where I am because I think if people, you know, we are not robots. We mm -hmm. are, we're, we, as I, I, I say this all the time and it's very true. We are souls having a human experience. We mm -hmm. really are of, of, of energy matter. And when you're in a downturn and you're seeing a lot of friends out of work, yep. you yourself aren't as busy as you once were. Um, that's a huge reason of why I started a tenant of my, my company I have an energy healer, if we want to talk that, about that for a second. I've been with him for a few years and I tap in that way because I am very much an empath and I feel things. And that's a big, th also a big part of being a talent booker. I walk in the room and I know when something is not right and I need to fix it before we even move to any sort of on-camera stuff because you want the energy to always be right on a set. Um, and it's very important. That's an important piece for me. And one one of the things that my healer said to me, he said, listen, it might just be time for you to get off of the, the battleground and become the general. And after doing this for as long as I have, I went, that feels right. I just did a huge job for Crunchyroll, the anime awards. I was very proud. I was able to bring Megan Thee Stallion out and she closed the night and, you know, and I was able to go to Japan to do this. And that has been a lifelong dream. And being there, their, what they, their culture, their way of life, the way that they operate is so calming and so a big part of my personality where you really, it forces you to be in the moment. And any moment that I could not be on a production, I was able to, I took full advantage of going to every single part of what Tokyo had to offer. And I went overnight after the show was done for a few days to really find my soul in Kyoto. And I'm so glad I did because I've been dreaming of that place. And I just think that it changed me. It changed me tremendously where I came back and it's funny because you said earlier, like, I just kind of like lost my taste for some of it. I've lost my taste for some of the aspects of the business, the toxicity of it all, mm. where talent bookers, and I'll say this, and I'm very proud to say it. We are the first to get blamed and the last to get thanked. And we're not protected by any guilds. 
or any anything. And it really bums me out. I mean, yes, there's a casting, um, there is a casting group, um, but but I joined the Producers Guild because I am a producer and I make sure that I move in that direction. But anyone who's truly just a, not just, but a truly a talent booker producer, there really is no protection. And I've been on some of the best of the best shows. And then I've been on some not so great ones where the toxicity was palpable. And I just care too much about people. I'm also a mom of two now, and my whole identity has changed a lot. And I only want to work with other people and other women who want to lift up other women. I am done with other people just putting you down to make themselves feel good. And I'm not going to dim my light to make you feel better. I'm just not doing that anymore. And so if that means I'm having lesser jobs because my my worth has gone up for me, then that is the risk I'm willing to take. So yes, mm. there have been times like right now where I'm going, what, where do I want to go? Let me reset. Let me put the, um, you know, put the settings in a different direction so this boat can go in the way that I want to go and go towards my North Star again and not just take everything just because it's a gig. I want to take the right thing. Mm, well, amen to all that. And now what I'm hearing actually, you know, going back to your wise energy healer is part of like the messy, uncomfortable part that requires your enterprise is leaning in to your transition from soldier to general. Yes. And I've done a tremendous amount of work in the last three months. It's been probably the quietest it's ever been for me. And I'm not ashamed to say it because I think women need to normalize the tough stuff as well. And I'm one of those people that will go up there. I'll put it on social media. I mean, I've talked about my infertility journey, which is a whole other thing. I've talked about the fact that women aren't, I mean, women are, are at war right now. Um, there's a lot of people that are just against women, which is really disgusting considering that we do create life and we should have the option whether or not we want to start it or not, but that's a whole other episode. But I think what's important is that we have to tap in and be honest with ourselves. And I feel that a lot of people put on their IG faces like, oh, everything's beautiful and glorious. And that's one of the things I tell the younger generations, like it's not always what you think it is. There's a lot of filters that go through that because not everybody is willing to talk about the tough stuff. So yes, I've had four months um, where it's been quieter than normal, but I'm also tapping into the universe and going, okay, I've been type A, I've been go, go, go. I've been a workaholic. I've been the have my phone by me at all times during dinner, which, which pisses off my husband. Um, and now I'm learning to receive, um, learning not to be so Sisyphean by putting this boulder up a hill and going, maybe there's another way to do this so that I'm not in constant fight or flight. And I think that is the message where it's just better on your body. Because I am an older mom, a mom who had kids later in life that I have to be in full emotional um, health in order to, and that goes for mental, physical, spiritual, in order to be here for a long time. And I don't know if it's worth risking all that stress. Um, I need to be here for a while. Mm. You know, now again, connecting the dots of your um, sort of transformational visit to Japan and then uh, Iggy Perillo, who I'd had on my podcast earlier on her recent podcast, she was talking about a book called Rest is Resistance. And mm. so there's, which I haven't read yet, but I meant going to what you're saying, there's a very powerful movement around rest. And it's also a reaction against going deep into capitalism, which is like the, you know, constant rush of doing and busy and, and making manufacture whatever to this other alternative of the idea of more cyclical it's along with the rhythms of nature because mm -hmm. you need to rest you and do. that's when things um first of all just to you know rest the soil but also then so that you can be you know ready to plant take root fertilize and then grow yep. and you know interestingly there is a book i just read and i love i don't know if you're familiar with ken honda but he wrote an amazing book called happy money he's from japan yes and it is phenomenal because, and he's been on a few podcasts and he basically says like, you know, when you know, like, let's honor the money you actually do have. Cause when is it enough? Like, when is the, you know, it almost like 
the goals keep shifting and moving. And it's like, when do you actually get to enjoy the fruits of your labor? And, you know, we always, especially when we've come from the world of MTV networks, it's like, well, you should be happy to be here. You know, you should be. And and I loved my my time at MTV. I still go back. There's still clients. So that's why I, like, I love everything about them. But one of the things that I think is a takeaway for a lot of us that work there is that that fear of like, oh, well, you know, if you don't keep moving, you're then you're going to kind of be out of the picture. And it's like, well, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Yes, you have to stay relevant, but I think that there's a way to do that without killing yourself in the process. And that is a hard lesson that I've learned in the last four months. Like I, I do know my body at this point. I've tapped in. I had, like I said, I've, I had two very difficult births with my kids and I was left with terrible migraines. And what kicks them off? Stress. And so, and I never had that before. So I'm like, okay, our bodies are amazing as they are and they can self heal. And as long as we're willing to tap in and listen, I mean, I started doing meditating, uh, just meditating and reading every morning to set off the tone because you can easily wake up, look at your phone, do it. And all of a sudden you're already a, a dog chasing your tail. And I think that you have to be in a more balanced mindset in order to take on. It's hard being a mom, a business owner, all the things you have to do in life. So it's like, okay, how do I do this and not cause more stress? And then you just get, I think you get better creative work out that way. And while I may not be making the amounts that I've made in the past, I am a much happier person now because I can actually breathe a lot deeper. And that is something I haven't been able to do in a long time. And that comes with, I think, age too. <laughs> so it's it's good to tap in and we do go through cycles and rhythms of life. And I think not all of us realize that. And we really need to tap into that more because the body needs to, and I'll add this, we also also went through a lot of trauma in the last couple of years between COVID, writer strike, like anyone in the creative fields, especially in media and television, we've gone through it. I was That's on American true. Idol and we shut down. We were one of the first shows. It was my first time working with them. We were about to start and the whole season had to get shut down and we were one of the first ones to go virtual. Uh, but it was a huge adjustment. And I think that a lot of us are still kind of working through what that was, not being ha able to have that human connection for three years. I was pregnant during that time too. So it was really like, I didn't, couldn't see, I was like woman in a bubble. <laughs> so it was tough. Wow. Okay. That's, um, I it just, it's intense having, um, had two kids myself to imagine what it was like to be, uh, pregnant. Cause again, during the entire pandemic, almost every day, I was so grateful. I didn't have small children because, my husband and I would joke that one or both of us might have been arrested. Um, it was just, oh my gosh, living <laughs> yeah. in an apartment in Brooklyn, just no way. But yeah. I actually want to go back and connect a dot too. And it's circling back to finding your drive because, um, you know, we hear that again, typically as Americans and thing drive ambition. Mm -hmm. And um, and now again, there's a wellspring of a newer movement to get. It's okay. You know, your drive might be to, you know, live a good life, however you define that. And so now I love too, it's like being happy with what you have, not necessarily meant like in a, you know, be grateful for the crumbs we just handed you. Right. But I mean, like, I love what I do. Why mm -hmm. do I have to keep growing or changing or, or doing these things to sort of like get promoted or die? It's like, you know what? I kind of, I kind of love the thing that I do. In fact, you know, to talk about me for a sec, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the coaching world, there's a lot of push and I get it to do one to many because the, you know, when you do mass work, you can reach more people and you know, that's where you're going to get into your seven figure businesses. I love the one-on-one. -on -one. Right. It's what, um, fills my heart. Mm -hmm. It's, it's my calling. It's what I'm meant to do the connection I make with people. And, you know, when I see them go out in the world and then do what they've been, what they've been called to do, it's, you know, I get it like that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and I love it. So right. circling back, what are some of, you know, Raquel Bruno's top tips for finding your drive? So I think it's, what do you enjoy doing that you don't consider work? So one of the things that I love to do, I mean, I love being able to First of all, the reason that I do what I do is I, I was a musician's kid. I was the first kid to watch MTV. My my mom rehearsed in our living room, same house I'm in right now. I bought the house and I, there's such great energy here. Um, I knew I needed to be around music. And even when I was working at Nickelodeon, Nick at Night, 
TV land, I launched TV land. My, all my bosses were like, would you please just go working at MTV already? Like, we'll, we'll pay you to go do that. Like, just go. Cause you're meant to be there. And I went to VH1 and then I, you know, working there in uh, production, which was great. And then I landed at MTV and is exactly what I wanted. It was something was always in my heart. And every day, I mean, every day I still dream and live music. I mean, I have my, some of my favorite LPs right behind me. So one of the things that I did during the pandemic, what I also love about what Ken Honda says is always being in service. And that's something that I organically just do. To your point, I love being in service. I love being able to guide. I love being able to teach and mentor. In fact, I ran a mentoring part of the world at, at Viacom. But I think that I started doing DJing on the side for years because I love being able to, my way of creating is not just producing, but actually creating a vibe, creating an atmosphere for people. And so when the pandemic hit, I said, you know what? I can't sit still and do nothing. I need to feel like I'm actually the connective tissue for some folks. And I put my 1200 techniques together and I just started doing, I was doing it on Instagram live and then I kept getting booted. And then I found an amazing app called Twitch through friends of mine. Four years later, we're still doing it. And that is my therapy every Wednesday and Saturday night is DJ Aviva. I play all vinyl. I brought back a lot of the love for a lot of people I know are now collecting vinyl because they love, they see my love of it. And so I've been able to shine through creativity that way. And that is my drive that being a DJ is one of my drives and I love it. Being able to connect the dots and give a platform for musicians and, and artists and, and actors is another one of my drives, giving them a platform and helping to find new talent. I love that. I love that I was on Logo Nuno Next Awards and I was on the producing team with Perry Turcotte and we gave Lady Gaga her TV debut. And that was such an amazing thing to say that we gave her her TV debut because I saw the talent in her and, and the and the drive that she had. You could see it within the first performance. It's like, wow, she is going to go far. So ha those moments that I get to witness and have witnessed, um, I, I cherish very much. And I that is what is drive is all about for me. So let's talk also a little bit about the other um, word we have in common is the word thrive, because it's in it's my tag is to thrive on camera and in life, which is how I combined life coaching, executive coaching, success coaching with media coaching and all my years with talent. It's like, I don't feel like you can be great on camera if you're not also feeling your wonderful self in alignment with who you are. So that's how they go together. And so now you have the thrive component of your business. And I was like, just leaning so far in my head, hit the computer on that one. So can we talk about that for a minute? Yes. That's so I know I was listening to your podcast. I'm like, wow, she has thrive as well. I mean, thrive is just such a great word. Cause it means like when you're, you're not just, you're not surviving. Like I feel like, yes, take a job. They're surviving. When you're thriving, you're literally, that is where it all comes together. Like your drive and your passion, that's thriving. You're literally coming together at the vortex of like, this is what I want to do. The energy that you give it, you know, when you, like when I'm DJing, people are like, I, you became like from the time you started when it was stressful, the kids had to take a bath and I was able to get on just by eight o'clock to the, by the end of it, I don't want to stop. It, my whole demeanor changes because the stress of the day gets lessened. I'm able to really be in true spirit. And I'm not trying to be religious about it. It's really just like tapping into what our energy is. We are all energy. And thriving is all, it's like literally like aim for the stars. When you're thriving, you are at your peak. And I think that it's such a delicious word. So I'm glad that you use it as well. That is That is our connective tissue, the two of us. Absolutely. And, you know, the same thing is that uh, when people come, they're so nervous about their speaking engagement or going, you know, to do that segment on CNBC or whatever. And it's like, if you're only looking to survive the experience, there are actually a bajillion people who can train you to survive. But if you want to thrive mm -hmm. and make an impact, yeah, then I'm yes. your gal. Yeah, a hundred percent. And then you, I mean, there's no one better than you for that, <laughs> for, for all of that, because you lived it you created so many people at VH1 that, um, and I, and I love that you're, you're one of the most humble people I know. And the fact that you're like, you, you really had a hand in so much of what that network was about. And that's the thing when we do, what we do as talent folks with people don't realize the behind the scenes of how that happens. And for me, when I'm able to see an artist, like my mom loves to show all the plaques that I got from all the artists. She's like, why don't you hang them up? I'm like, because I had the experience of it. I don't need a plaque to see it. I, I literally 
was able to witness the transformation of talent um, from the moment that I gave them that just gave them the platform and they did the rest. And I think same with you. It's like, you want to work with people that are, have drive, right. And that want to go to the next place. And you're able to give them that um, confidence in which to do it. Sometimes they just need a little bit of that spark to just get them going in the right way. Mm, well, that was very kind of you. And I, and I, uh, I pre- first of all received, but wasn't looking for um, an endorsement, That's but true. I want to then write back at you because a couple things that you just brought up that in new words, I want to introduce one goes back to your being an empath is you bring tremendous humanity because um, television is not known for its humanity. And, um, and by the way, there's a lot of money involved and there's, there's a lot going on and it is really, really fast and intense. But I also at the same time believe that there's plenty of room to be humane. So you bring your humanity in the same time, because you're an empath, you're really sensitive to the vulnerability mm-hmm. of the talent and, and what it takes to go out there and be creative. So at the same time, Lady Gaga can have all the drive and ambition and just talent that can't be contained in the world. We all know that. But if that was her first time on TV, that's an enormously vulnerable moment. And for many performers, each time you get on stage is an enormously vulnerable moment. And I think being a, my mom being a performer and I was there and she gets very nervous. I mean, she will hate me that I'm saying it, but she does. I mean, she's been doing this since she's three. She's in her news and uh, <laughs> for the best jazz musicians that I know, but she still gets as nervous as the first time she went on stage. And I'm sitting there going, you, you can, do, you do this all the time. You can do this. And I think a big part of it, and I've gotten into fights with my, some of my, cl- my own clients, because I want the talent to feel that they're in a safe space. And there's a, a reason why I get hired a lot of the time, still internally as well with MTV, is that they know that I'm there to make everyone feel good and make sure that I understand what they're going up against as a network. I'm very sensitive that there may be bigger deals going on, that I I just, I always, ta- I respect the process always. But I also respect when there's something going on with talent and doing a check-in and understanding like, Listen, so this, even though this is not what's been said, I'm reading the undercurrent of what's happening with this talent right now. And this is not the right time to ask them to do this. And I've had plenty an argument with some of my clients. They're like, well, why can't you just ask them? Like, you have got to trust me because it's taken years for me to build up these relationships. And I'm not about to blow it over a project. Their relationship to me is very important. I will also add that I had the absolute honor very early on in my career to work with one of the greats who showed me what it was to come from Hollywood royalty, but also be one of the kindest person in the room. And that was John Ritter. I learned, I still get choked up when I talk about him. I, um, I speak with, um, one of his, his, um, business partners forever, uh, Bob, I adore him, Bob Myman. We go back and talk about all the time. And he's one of the most like biggest lawyers in, in LA, but he's one of the kindest people, just like John. And we will sit in a room when we see each other and we'll cry thinking about John. And it's been years. John just showed the humanity of it all. You say about the humanity. I really learned early on from him. I was 22, 23, maybe working with him. And I'm like, you know what, if he can go to Hollywood high and he's been there. He's done that. Had also had his brother had cerebral palsy. My uncle had cerebral palsy. We bonded about that. It made him a very humane person and understanding what it is to be a, be a kind person first and the rest will follow. That was always the way he was. He spoke to the assistant as well as the CEO with the same amount of respect. And that to me, I went, it's possible in this industry. You don't have to be a jerk. Even though a lot of people sometimes take that route. I'm like, nope. And then I don't have to work with people in that because I want to feel good when I walk into a set. I want to feel good and know that everybody is with the same endeavor to make this project happen. It's hard enough, you know, trying to create something from nothing when you have a knife at your back. Like it, it just, I, I, I cringe at swimming with sharks, the movie, because it's like, oh God, there's, there's a lot of that. But at the same time, I think, oh you honey, all- oh honey, I lived it. I was an assistant I- at a town agency. I know, I know what have. it's like to someone to say to you, one's pink and one's blue. And I didn't yep. hire you to think. Yep. I lived it. I actually like with a friend when that actually was in theaters, we were, that too gave me hives. Let me just put it I'm that sure way. You, I'm sure you almost like vomited a little in your throat. Yeah, I'm For sure. anyone who doesn't know the reference, but maybe watched Entourage, it's, we were all, you know, Rex mm-hmm. or whatever. I can, now I can't yeah. remember the assistant's name, but we were that. 
Yep. Um, yeah. Oh yes. You know what else I want to go to? Cause I could talk to you forever. And so you're coming back, Raquel, just done. Let's accept Let that. me know a date. <laughs> but you know, adding one more word to the mix and that's choice because, um, you have a choice every day. And so to be a jerk is a choice yep. to show up with kindness. And that's why now, you know, when I do talks for companies, I'm just like, we, I just bring Harry Styles into it. And I just like treat people with kindness. Yes. Yes. That it's that simple. And unfortunately we are in an industry with a lot of insecurity and the insecurity that comes with that is the fact that they feel that they have to be a jerk or they have to be a this, or they have to be a that. And it's like, no, you don't have to, I'm the same person you met back in, you know, whenever we first met as I am today, I'm not changing who I am because I mean, I'll change and be a better version of myself, but I'm not going to just tap into the bullying mentality. And there's actually a podcast. I forgot the name of it. I read recently about um, the, the toxic bullying of women in the workplace. I just saw something about it. I'm really curious to re to hear that. And there's a book, I may buy it as well, because there is unfortunately a, a, a dark energy of that. And I feel like the more I'm able to be on set and show what it can be in the in the eyes of John Ritter and continuing in that amazing, I mean, he literally, I walked into, to, it was a, for the upfronts for um, Nick at Night when we were introducing uh, Three's Company. And I went in, I was a little too early picking him up and he opened the door. He's like, oh, we're just having breakfast. Sit down. I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to come back. He's like, nope. He like made sure I had a full breakfast. Like he, the, like the, it doesn't know me from anyone and literally treated me with kindness from minute one. And that is really, truly who he was. And so I think if I can take the essence and, you know, there are no mistakes. I think people are, earth angels are put into your orbit for a reason for you to change your dynamic. And I've had the best of the best in terms of mentors and I want to live in their honor uh, because they taught me what it was to be kind. And I think it's just important that we continue that because you can be creative and kind. You don't have to be so aggressive. Like I'm about drive, but you don't have to be so aggressive where it hurts the other person. When I do a deal with talent, both sides need to win. Both sides need to feel that they are winning together. Otherwise, it's not a fun deal. Nobody, then you go into it and nobody wants to do it. And it's in bad energy. So. I've, I've had very hard conversations, but I know how to be an adult and say, listen, we're going to go into this. I need X, Y, and Z. Can you do this? If not, then this is your, your project. And that's okay too. But it's being open and honest with your drive, with your passion and with your kindness. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. I can't, well, I can't wait to have you back. This was great. Of course. All I'm right. glad to be here and thank you because it means a lot. I and mean, it's not easy to put together a podcast either. So thank you for doing the work that you do. Oh, you're so welcome. I appreciate you saying that. And I want to thank you, the audience, always for listening to Camera Ready and Able. So if you have a moment, please leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to Camera and Ready and Able. Um, I'm so excited about talking to Raquel. I'm tripping over my words. So I just want to say it really does help others find the podcast when you leave a review. So thanks in advance for doing it. And as always, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already.